So let's bring in CNBC senior analyst and veteran commentator Ron Insana. He's also advisor to Schroeder's North America and the veteran Michael Farr, chief market strategist for Hightower Advisors, founder of Farr Miller in Washington, also a CNBC contributor. Gentlemen, welcome. Uh, three Thanks, veterans man. here right now, folks. Yeah, but no medals to show for it. <laughs> no, no medals to show for it. Ron, right. let's talk about the, the... It seems to me that this year has been particularly tranquil. There haven't been, there hasn't been as much volatility uh, as maybe we would have expected. Am I forgetting something? What's going on here that there, we haven't had a big correction and that yeah. volatility seems really rather placid? Well, you know, I think, and, and if you looked it up until recently, uh, all the major uh, themes were moving in tandem over the last several months. You had growth and value move together today, notwithstanding. You had large and small move together. You had Europe and the U.S. move together. And, and so that reopening trade was powerful both domestically and globally. And today, you know, to me, it's nothing more than shifting from an inflation scare to a growth scare because of COVID. And, and health care policy as much as we don't want to admit this, Tyler, I think is still economic policy. We're not past the point where we can be entirely comfortable uh, that COVID has gone away from pandemic to endemic. We have 48% of the population still not vaccinated. And so when you see something like Austria, when you see it spreading in Germany, or more domestically, when you see it in Michigan, the Midwest and the Northeast, you know, that's going to knock the market back a little bit. But you're right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been a much more tranquil market. It's been a steady upward trend. And just about almost everything has worked so far this year. Yeah. And as you said, when you say a growth scare, I, uh, let's be clear, you're saying a, a slowing of growth scare or a, la right, a, a lack of growth. So, Michael, let's let's uh, Ron pinpoints the, the, the growth uh, uh, worries uh, on the one hand, inflation worries on the other. How do you invest when you've got those two um, poles at work here and which one worries you more? Right. Uh, well, certainly we know that uh, the, the pandemic and uh, COVID is the greatest worry for Janet Yellen. She has said that. Secretary Yellen has said that. The most important thing I think you can pay attention to as an investor is the price you pay. The price you pay and the multiple you pay will really determine your results over time. It's like buying a house. It's what you pay. So uh, some things in this market have gotten really expensive, and today they're getting more expensive. The FANG stocks, the tech stocks, they're all on a roll, and money is moving there. You can see that the Dow is well underperforming. Those industrial stocks, a lot of those value names, have not kept up. So I think you look at those areas that really have not participated in this rally as much, and you still take a look at some of the reopening trades. For instance, you look at a Medtronic or a Stryker. These are companies that, that make, you know, uh, medical devices, and elective surgeries haven't been happening as much, particularly when COVID had surged through the fall. They pulled back. I think there are probably some opportunities there as you get people saying, I, I still need a new knee, I still need a pacemaker, I've still got to do these other things and go back mm -hmm. uh, as soon as I can into the hospitals. I think there are other names that aren't overly expensive. I think CVS, even though it's had a pretty good year, still remains reasonably inexpensive, and they have decent growth spot prospects and vertically integrated and a decent dividend. So there are places to invest, and I think you have to still know that balance sheets matter earnings matter and you should know what you own and not get complacent about things just going up forever.